Hello and welcome. Today in our video we're going to roll th three dice and figure out the distribution and we'll roll four dice and figure out the distribution. So this is helpful anytime you have uh, dice that you need to roll. So let's get started. Hello, my name is Jeff from Finally Learn, where I help you finally learn financial skills, including Excel. So I got this question the other day and the question basically boiled down to how would you implement rolling four six-sided dice and removing the lowest roll? Okay, I have a video before, and I will link to the description below. I have a video that shows a two dice distribution and a two dice Monte Carlo simulation to simulate a bunch of rolls. And so what we want to do is I'm going to do in this video, I'm going to do three dice, the probability, the estimated, and then the random distribution if we roll uh, those dice. Four dice, the probability estimated, and then the random distribution and then four dice dropping the lowest. And so that's an improved three dice roll. And so we'll show the estimated probability and also the distribution there on a bunch of random events, random rolls. So let's, as we get started, uh, let's think about what we have. For three dice, you would have each die has six sides, so one through six. So you'd have six times six times six or six to the third power. Uh, you'd have 216 combinations, four dice, it would be six to the fourth power, 1,296 combinations. So we've got this all worked out. I'll put links uh, on where you can see the chapter so you can skip to the three dice or the four dice or uh, the final answer if you want to. All right, here's our problem with three dice. So what I did, I implemented, well, we have three dice and we're going to have uh, 216 different combinations. So I, I plotted out for uh, die one, die two, die three. So basically we start with what if the first roll is one, 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 and then one, one, two is the second roll, one, one, three. And then once we get through the six, we start, we change die two to two and on, on, and on. And so what I have, I've completely figured out using Excel, cause that's a really handy feature to figure out what are the 216 combinations. And then, if you want to know how the Excel works on this, um, see my other videos that I'll link to below to how I build this. But basically what I'm, I'm doing is, the possible answers are three through 18. If you roll three ones, you've got a three. And I have a sum here. Uh, and if you roll six, uh, three times, six, 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 then you'd have 18. And so then uh, there's just one way to get a triple Th uh, ones or triple sixes, and then we count. So I'm, I'm using a little statement a function called count ifs. So I'm counting how many threes there are, how many fours. And so what we see is at 216 possibilities, here is uh, the most common. We have two right there in the middle, the 10 and the 11. We've got 27 ways to get a 10 or 27 ways to get 11. And so then the estimated probability is 27 out of 216, and you can do it as a percent, that's 12 and percent. So this is a good way to think about the statistics. So if you wanted to have a statistics answer, it says, what's the probability if you roll three dice, what's the probability of getting exactly a six? Well, you'd say uh, 10 out of 216. You might want to convert it to, um, to the math there. Uh, in fact, this one looks like I have uh, not a percentage here, so let me run the math, make sure that's, yeah, that looks a little better. So I had a one cell that looked like it wasn't correct. And what you see, this is symmetrical. So 27, 25 on each side, 21, 21. So it says it might uh, be, what's the probability of rolling a 17? Well, it is three possibilities out of 216. So it is around 1.4%, so three out of 216. It might say, what's the chance of rolling a 10, 11, and 12, right? So you can add up these percentages. What is the uh, probability of rolling that? Well, that turns out to be about 36% of getting a 10, 11, or 12. Okay, so we see this is, um, distributed, not normally, but it's it's symmetrical. So then I just ran some numbers on this. The mean would be 10 and a half, the standard deviation, the max, the min, and the median. The median would be between 10 and 11, so 10 and a half. 
Well, so I have the same kind of thing here. And so what I decided to do, let me show you um, once again, if you care about the Excel part of this, go back and look at the other videos. I've run this um, 100,000 times. So if you run something, you know, a, a big number, a thousand, 10,000, a hundred thousand, a million or whatever, then you get to see patterns and you kind of, uh, kind of verify your work. So here we have three dice, uh, one, two, three, and we got the total, and I just did this continually. And so what I have is I have a random number between one and six. It just randomly pulls one through six on each one. And anytime uh, it's dynamic, so anytime we do something, it changes that. So the very first one's a four and a three and a five, that's a 12. So if I did anything, if I, if I um, hit F9 to recalculate, so that becomes a two, a one, a six, and a total of nine. So it just constantly pulls random numbers. And so what I've done is, is I did a sample of one. So I've uh, done some name ranges in Excel. Once again, if you care about that, look at the vi other video. But for our purposes, if I just sample one, it's gonna roll a nine. If I sample one again, it's gonna roll an eight. And so you can see how this works. Well, there's the distribution. But it really gets interesting if you start rolling you know, 10 times. So now my distribution, um, don't really see any pattern here, but but uh, you can see I did not roll in those 10 rolls. I didn't roll a three or a four or a 16, 17, 18. And so then we can do, we can do 100. So what it's doing is taking the first one or the first 10 or first 100. And so this is 100 rolls. Uh, this would be, the next one would be 1,000 rolls. So you see we have, here's what the estimated would be based on our probability, and here's the error. We know it's not going to be, it, it doesn't have to be, um, the next roll doesn't have to be a certain number. It's independent rolls, and you know, in a big uh, estimate, in a big sample size, lots of trials, then it'll get approach this estimated that we have. So a thousand, you see it get, looks better, and so 10,000 is going to be a more symmetrical shape, and then 100,000 is a more symmetrical, as a better estimate. So what we've done is we've counted how many times a 3 came up or a, a 12 or so on, and so we have 100,000 here, the estimated here, and so let's go back to the 10, and you can see I have big numbers um, negative or red, green is positive, and so we just don't know what the number is going to be. But if we do enough samples, then we kind of know what the distribution is going to look like. And so over time, if we had a sample of 100, then the sample is a little bit different than the estimated 10.5, and the standard deviation may be more or less. The minimum and the maximum is a little bit different because we didn't pull an 18 or a 17. So the maximum on our sample was just 16. All right, so that's what happens on a three dice roll. Let's go back and do um, the 100,000. Now, if you care about uh, three dice roll, maybe you're taking a statistics class, you, you might be able to just freeze this and you can answer a lot of questions based on this. And you could say, well, we have, um, the probability, this right here, the probability of pulling a 12 or a, a 5 or a 5 and a 6 or whatever, all sorts of ways to do that, and you have it all figured out for three dice. Okay, let's switch over to four dice. All right, four dice, we have the same kind of thing going on, except now, four dice, we have uh, 6 to the fourth power, we've got 1,296 combinations. So our first row would be one, 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 and then one, 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 two through six, and then we change that third dice to uh, two, and then on and on and on. So, so we have the same kind of thing here. We've counted all the possibilities. There's only one way to get four, uh, a four, which is four ones. Only one way to get a 24, which is four sixes. And you see the distribution then, once again, is symmetrical if you do uh, many, many samples. So here's what we think it'll be. The mean is 14, 
Uh, the other one was 10 and a half, right, for three dice. The mean is 14. The minimum is four. The maximum is 24. So let's randomize this. So if we randomize this for uh, one, it just pulls, well, there's an 11, and that's not very interesting. But if you want to pull uh, 10, it gets better. 100 is better. And then all the way up to 100,000. So at that point, our count is 100,000. Here's our percentages. Here's what our estimated was based on the previous probability. So if you want to say, hey, what's the probability? If you roll, if you roll four dice, what's the probability of getting a 12? Well, it looks like it is we estimate it to be 9.65, and our sample of 100,000 was actually 9.87. But we only can predict based on um, the estimated probability. So here we had, for the 12, you say, what's the probability of rolling four dice and getting a, so, a total of 12, 9.65% or 125 out of 1296. So that has to be our estimate. Um, even though our sample here was slightly different. All right, so let's look at, the question was asked, and I want to get to this one here, what if we roll four dice and take the best um, three? So here's what I did. I did the sum of all four and then took out the minimum number, the smallest number. Now, one, 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 the smallest number would be a one, so the sum would be a three. So this rolls four dice, and it only takes the top three. Now, if there's a tie, it just takes out one of those, and so you always take the three larger numbers, the, the largest three. So here is our, we've got um, all the different combinations here. So we got all the combinations, so I use all the combinations, and I just took out the, the large, um, largest number. So here's what happens you can get, uh, instead of a four, you can get a three, and you can go all the way up to 18. You can roll um, three sixes, and then whatever that other uh, dice is, um, one, two, three, four, five, or six, it would take that out, and you'd have an 18. So there's several different ways of doing this. So let's see how the distribution works if you roll four dice and you, and you keep the best three. Well, now watch, this is no longer symmetrical. This is called skewed to the left, we have, uh, it's kind of moved over to the right a little bit here. And so the, um, if you have three, you expect the mean to be 10.5. But if you roll four and take the best three, the mean goes up to 12.2 or so, or almost 12.25. And so what happens here is it increases the mean. So if you're rolling four dice to get the top three, you're going to improve your, your average score from about 10 and a half, or your average roll, about 10 and a half to about 12.2 or 12.25, something like that. So let's do this. So let's randomize this uh, for, um, let's do one here, same kind of thing. If you do one, not very interesting, right? But if you did 100 rolls, then you start seeing a, a pattern here. We did skip to the 1,000, skip to 10,000, and skip all the way to 100,000. What you're going to see is it's going to approach um, the approximated, the estimated results. So what we see is on the sample, the sample was 12.247 rather than 12.245, really, really close. If you only run 100, the sample is going to be maybe 12.3, and some are, are higher than you expected. So in other words, the 13, the 13 was much higher than expected, but that could happen. Do you see we expect only 13% of the rolls, 13.27% to be uh, 13, but we had 19%. Well, that's going to happen. And so over larger and larger uh, simulated uh, numbers, rolls, then you would end up with a something that looks more and more uh, average or what the estimated would be. So this one doesn't look very good. If we rolled it again, if I simply did uh, F9 to recalculate, we might get a better result. We get a different result there, more, a lot more green, and you see what happens. 
the distribution changes. So the way we solve that is do more and more, do 100,000 and everything looks completely different. So this is how you do, estimate three dice, four dice, and then four dice if you take the top three. I hope this was helpful. Check out those other two videos if you wanna know, you know how you do this in Excel, if you, if you care about the Excel part of that. But here, just solve the answer for you. Thanks, we'll see you on the next video.